Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of This Week in Comics. My name is Yule, and every week I run down comics I'm looking forward to, and I let you know my store, Fantastic Comics, top five books that we sold last week. So, without any further preamble, let's get on with the show. Counting down the comics, starting from number five, we have Wonder Woman number 51. A brand new writer in Steve Orlando, and Wonder Woman breaks into the top five. Coming in at number four, we have a one-shot from Marvel in Infinity Wars Prime. This is going to lead into the Infinity Wars series that starts this week. Coming in at number three, we have Action Comics number 1001. This is the first new story in Action Comics from Brian Michael Bendis with artist Patrick Gleason. The runner-up spot this week is Doomsday Clock number six. I have a sneaking suspicion in the future it's only ever going to be in the number one spot. But sitting at number one this week we have Saga number 54. This is the last part of the story arc. Soon we'll be collecting in a trade paperback. I will be reviewing this later in the show. There were over 90 books last week. I'm reviewing three of them. <laughs> All right, here we go. First up this week, we have The Century Number 2, written by Jeff Lemire with art by Kim Jacinto. Jeff Lemire has a knack of writing really excellent second issues, ones that really make you want to read the third issue, which is not something that a lot of writers are actually able to do. Like, the first issues are really good, and then the second issues kind of peter on. But again, like I said, Jeff Lemire does a really good job with that. In the, this issue, we are following Bob, who is the sentry. Bob's machine that lets him enter a pocket universe has been stolen. And he needs this so that he could be the sentry there rather than in our world. Because if he does that, there's a very good chance that the void, his alter ego, will come out and play. And that's never a good thing. The panic that comes across Bob as he's trying to contact Tony Stark because he needs a new machine to get in this universe. He feels the sentry coming on and we don't want him to be the sentry in this world. So he's calling Tony Stark, his old friend. He's like, hey, I need some help. Tony Stark's not answering. He calls Misty Knight, his liaison for not S.H.I.E.L.D. She's not answering. He goes to his old pal, Billy, who is a cook at the restaurant that Bob works at and uh, Billy and him have a conversation about all of this. Billy's like, why didn't you come to me first? And I really like the characterization between these characters. Again, with the artwork, the panic that is overcoming Bob uh, it really plays out very well. Meanwhile, in the pocket dimension, whoever did the stealing of the device is there and he's beaten the heck out of Centris. That's her name, the Sentry female character. And uh, she's getting pummeled in there. And yeah, everything is really cool. I really enjoyed this issue. There's a lot of good action. There's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. And if you really want to see Tony Stark, he does show up in the, uh, towards the end of the book. I recommend this. I'm enjoying this book as it's going forward. And I'm definitely going to read the third issue. Those of you that have seen earlier episodes of this know that I'm not a really big Sentry fan. I am a real big Jeff Lemire fan. I also like the artist a bit, so I am on board at least for the time being. I highly recommend you pick this up. If you like a superhero, you don't know where, what's going to happen with him, this is definitely one you should check out. Next up we have Mr. and Mrs. X number one. For those of you that aren't aware, Rogue and Gambit got married and this is the book about that. In the very first part of this book we see the wedding kind of, like the stuff that happened before it and now we're on the honeymoon after that so we don't get to see the I do's again but everything leading up to it and the stuff that follows. And also when they're in their honeymoon suite which is in space Kitty Pride contacts them and wants them to go and steal something for them. This is very important that they would uh, have to interrupt their honeymoon to make this happen. I was worried at first when reading this book that, you know, we weren't going to get the caper aspect of this that I wanted. But sure enough, we get it and I like it and the art was excellent. So I highly recommend you pick up Mr. and Mrs. X. 
fans of Gambit and or Rogue have to get this anyway. And if you're an X-Men fan, this is probably one of the better books that's coming out right now under um, the X banner, if you would. So yeah, pick it up. Are you caught up on Saga? Because if you aren't, there's a lot of spoilers in this 54th issue that came out last week. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that pick it up and wait and then read it all at once. Do not flip ahead in this issue. There is a lot of stuff in here you don't want to see beforehand. I, I, it's so funny, like, I have people that come up and I tell them that, and the first thing they're doing is they're flipping open the book. Anyway, uh, this continues the whole story that we've been reading since issue number one. And as far as I'm concerned, this is like one of my favorite story arcs in Saga that's been going on. Actually, towards the second half of the last one, is actually when I thought Saga has really turned the corner for me and is a book that I want to continue reading until the end. There was a time somewhere in like the 20s through 30s where I wasn't so sure that was the case, but I am really enjoying this book and the end, oh my gosh, the end. Like I said, don't flip ahead because you're gonna be really spoiled on that one and you're gonna be upset with yourself if that happens. Also, there is a letters page that you should read. I'm gonna spoil a little bit of it to you. This is going to be the last issue of Saga for what is probably going to be a year. And I know a lot of you are probably gonna be upset with that, saddened by this. But let me tell you, as far as a shop owner who's number one comic that we sell at Saga, none of you are more upset than I am right now. I guess I'll just have to sell the books when they get collected. But until then, I highly recommend you pick up this issue. It's a key issue. This is like one of, this is like uh, Alpha Flight number 12, Spider-Man 121. These are very, this is a very important issue. You have to pick this one up. Definitely read it when you get it. I liked it a lot and so should you. These are the comics you should be looking out for next week. For those of you that thought Super Sons was canceled because Brian Michael Bendis got put on the Superman books, you were correct. But to placate us, DC gives us a 12-issue miniseries called The Adventures of the Super Sons, which is going to be a story that is going to take place prior to John leaving Earth. And it's going to be written by previous Super Sons writer Peter Tomasi with art by Carlo Bar Barberi, and I uh, think this is gonna be pretty good. For those of you that are sad that probably one of the best all ages DC books that was being published got canceled, you can rejoice, it's coming back again for at least 12 more issues. Batman number 52 is the second part of the Cold Days storyline that sees Mr. Freeze on trial for murder. Bruce Wayne is a member of the jury, and at the end of the first issue, he kind of does a 12 Angry Men where everybody is ready to convict. Bruce Wayne st stands up and says, I don't want to. And this is because he, who is Batman, basically knows that he pummeled Mr. Freeze into a confession, and just this whole uh, trial is a joke. I don't know what's going to happen in this issue, but I'm really excited to find out. Also, the artwork by Lee Weeks is excellent. I really like his courtroom drama setting, and as I said in previous episode, uh, Lee Weeks does a really good job making people sit down seem exciting. Tom King, on the other hand, has been doing a really good job humanizing the Bruce Wayne slash Batman character, and this storyline is no different. For those of you that are upset that Batman didn't get married to Catwoman at the end of issue 50, fear not. The book is still great. I highly recommend you pick up this storyline especially because I'm really enjoying it. Next up we have The Paybacks. This is a trade paperback collection of a storyline that came out a few years ago by Donny Cates and Jeff Shaw. And any of you that have read Thanos probably want to check this book out. It's funny and I, uh, I read it and I liked it quite a bit actually. It's all about these superheroes that go and repossess superheroes items when they can't pay back basically their loan shark that gave them either money or equipment and stuff like that. I uh, Yeah, there's not much more to say about this. The artwork is excellent and like I said, it's very funny and uh, there's some action in it too that I recommend. Uh, pick this one up if you are in search for more Donny Cates work. 
Next up we have Justice League number five. For those of you that don't know, every fifth issue of Justice League is gonna be a Legion of Doom, a super villains issue, if you will. And this one, although it's not being written by Scott Snyder, it's gonna be written by James Tinian. They're basically the same person. And the artist in this issue is gonna be Doug Monkey, and I'm a real big fan of his, all the way since his mask days. So I am looking forward to this book because it's a villain story. I don't really like reading entire series about villains, so this will be nice to just have a one-shot storyline uh, featuring them, and then going back into the heroes and stuff like that in next issues. So pick up Justice League if you wanna read some villains, you like Doug Monkey, or you just gotta get more Justice League. Last but not least from Dark Horse Comics, we have Seeds number one. This is a burger book. Uh, Karen Berger is the editor of this imprint. She used to be the editor of Vertigo books, and now she's bringing Anne Ascenti back to comics. She wrote Daredevil way back in the day, and this has artwork by David Aja. We haven't seen him since his Matt Fraction Hawkeye series. So just those two parts, and the Karen Berger, actually three parts alone should be a reason to pick this one up. It is about a reporter that has a story that if it gets released could cause all sorts of problems. And this book is being uh, described as an eco-fiction tech thriller where flora and fauna begin to mutate. So, if you are a fan of David Aja or just good looking books, I recommend you pick this one up. Obviously, I haven't read it yet, so I don't know if it's going to be great, but I expect good things from it. Pick this one up. It is an ongoing series from Burger Books. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you everybody for tuning into another episode. If there's anything we mention on this show that you want to talk about, let us know in the comments down below. If there's any suggestions you have for us, let us know in the comments down below. And if you just want to say how great we are, just give us a thumbs up and we'll see you next week.